Hi everyone, I'm Moody Boo and I am back with another 10 top perfumes for my top 10 villains this time. So my first villain that I adore, these are going to be 10 villains that I just love in movies, fictitious villains of course. And I'm going to also do, I'm going to go a little creepy and do like some fictitious movie killer perfumes and um, I'm going to start doing like different movie cast, you know, different uh, characters in a movie, perfume them because it's just fun to do. I'm sorry, but it's just fun to do. So um, I get bored when my husband's out of town. So I got to do stuff like this. All of these perfumes I may not have owned, but I have tried at some point. So I am familiar with them at least a little bit. And so I didn't have to wing it with anybody. So, all right, first up is Jadis the White Witch from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That was played by Tilda Swinton. She always does a fabulous job. Anyway, I wanted something kind of cold feeling. So I knew I wanted a lot of citrus in there. I looked for other things like with juniper, because that can make a, a, a mint, you know, things like that to make the perfume cold feeling. But I couldn't find anything that really tripped my trigger, so I went to the citruses instead. Another criteria I wanted for Jadis is that she was able to turn the snow into sweets. And so I wanted there to be definitely some vanilla. Um, and I also wanted um, some foresty smells in there, so some woods, some amber to show the heat that she's, she's icy, and yet there's a fire in her at the same time. So um, anyway, and then some musk. I wanted some musk in there too, because, you know, she is the White Witch, and some of the critters and characters she's around probably would be a rather musky. So the perfume that I chose for Jadis the White Witch is Memo Paris Winter Palace. So it's orange and tolu balsam and tea and vanilla and a bunch of citruses and some spice and tonka and amber and benzoin and labdanum and woody notes. It was perfect for her. I only sampled it though like two months ago and it, it just didn't really do anything for me. I appreciated it and I kind of wish... I had tried it at a different time of year because I might have appreciated it more um, in warmer weather, but I may have to dig up my sample. I don't think I used it up and see how it does this spring. So, all right, that's it for Jadis the White Witch, Memo Paris Winter Palace. Next villain. So my next villain is from a favorite movie, Legend. And that's the Lord of Darkness, played by Tim Curry. He was so perfect in that role. So perfect. And I love that movie. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I, the visual and the fantasy of it just drew me in. So I absolutely loved it. Now, the darkness that I am perfuming is the one when he's trying to woo Lily. And so I wanted some fruits in there, and there was some goblets of wine sitting there, so I wanted wine in there. And <clears throat> it's, it, it's a lot of this movie takes place in the forest, so I wanted some woods and green notes in there and earthy notes. But I also wanted some spice because, well, he's the Lord of Darkness, so... He came from hell, and he's probably a little hot and spicy, I should think. So there's, I wanted some peppers and spices in there. And the perfume I chose for the Lord of Darkness is by Vagabond Prince, Enchanted Forest.
this when I smell this now that I have linked it to the Lord of Darkness. That's who I think of. Because the Enchanted Forest is very moist, very like after a rain forest, green. But there's always this underlying hint of unknown to it, of, of, of darkness to it. So it's almost like an enchanted forest at night is what you're smelling. And I don't know how you put night in a note. But they do a good job. I think it's because it's moist and it's dark berries and it's, it's wet green forest. I don't know. It just gives this air of mystery. And with a name like Enchanted Forest for the movie Legend, uh, yeah, and Vagabond Prince, he is the Prince of Darkness, so I thought it was a perfect, perfect perfume for him. And also, it's alluring. And he was trying to woo Lily. He wanted, he wanted her. He wanted her to be his bride. So it wouldn't be foul smelling. There'd be no sulfur and brimstone in there. You know, it would be aromas to draw her in and uh, enwrapped her. So that's why I thought Enchanted Forest is perfect. And performance on it is super good, too. I do own a bottle of that, and I covet it. I love it. I just wore it the other day. Love it. So anyway, that is Vagabond Prince, Enchanted Forest, for the Lord of Darkness from the movie Legend. Next villain. My next villain is probably one of my all-time favorite villains. And that's Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones. That's played by Lena Headey. She was amazing in the role, and the role was amazing, and the show was amazing, and I miss it. So with Cersei Lannister, I wanted to perfume her right after she hit her lowest spot. After she's done the walk of shame, and it was horrible, foul, gross, but she's got her power back. She was the type of woman that I think would want to be reminded of that because it would remind her to never have empathy, to never believe in anything other than herself, um, to never rule with anything but an iron hand. So I think she would wear a perfume that would remind her of some of the bad times along with the good times. So I picked for Cersei Lannister um, Olympic Orchids from the Devil Project, Dev number two. I love Olympic Orchids. It's an independent perfume house, but it is amazing. I have um, several perfumes from Olympic Orchids. At least I used to. I did give a few away to my nieces and some friends and co-workers and things like that. But I still have Asafume, and it's still one of my favorites. <clears throat> so for Cersei Lannister, I wanted spice, lots of spice, to show the heat. And almost like you can't take too much of her or you'll burn up. So I wanted lots of spice in there. And I wanted a lot of animalic notes to just show the nastiness of her. I mean, she was screwing her brother, for Christ's sakes. Heck, two, three kids with him. So, ew, just gross. And so I wanted to a lot of animalic notes, not just to represent how she smelled during her walk of shame with all that feces on her, but also... Um, her ickiness with her brother. So I wanted a lot of animalic notes in there. That's why the Dev Pro or Dev Devil Projects Dev Number Two was perfect. <laughs> but it's a really good perfume. So it's incense and clove and cinnamon and labdanum and civet and castorium and there's leather and she wore a lot of leather. That was another thing I wanted in there. 
and there's woody notes and musk and uh, green notes and a hint of florals, but I never really get the florals. For me, it's all about the spice and the animalic notes, but it's not, it, it's not an overpowering, you know, fecal smell or anything like that. It's super, super interesting. Now, I had a sample of it that came with, it might have been Asafume or one of the other ones that I have of hers. And I went through that sample. Absolutely finished that sample. Now, did I wear it out of the house? No. Um, would I buy a full bottle? Uh, probably not. It's not really for me. But for Cersei Lannister, it's perfect. And Olympic Orchids is a great indie house. Prices are incredible. The selection of perfumes, it's its such a huge variety and there's so much imagination with them. I ex really hope that you guys check them out. Um, <clears throat> and performance is really good on this one too. So that's Dev number two from Olympic Orchids for Cersei Lannister from the Game of Thrones. Next villain. So the next one is probably one of the most charismatic and sexiest villains on in the movies, um, even though he's super creepy at the same time. And that is Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, played by Anthony Hopkins. Now, come on. Hannibal Lecter wouldn't have been as good of a character as he was and as creepy and wonderful and dynamic. And he just stole the show every time. And that wouldn't have happened if you weren't a little attracted to him. Just saying. Everybody can go a little blind when they're attracted. So the whole cannibal killing thing, you know, feeding body parts to people at dinner parties. Yeah, that's all right. As long as you come home and cook me fava beans with a nice Chianti, I'm good. Anyway, for Hannibal Lecter, I knew he'd wear a very expensive perfume. He would not cut corners. He wouldn't even bother. Oh, there's a squirrel in my railing. He wouldn't even bother with a Target perfumes. He wouldn't even walk in a Target. I don't even think he'd walk in a Macy's or a Bloomies or anything like that. He'd be, it'd be exclusive boutiques and um, very high-end shopping places. That's what I see him in. Oh! Now it's yelling at me. Squirrel! For real this time. So anyway, I knew he wouldn't wear anything that wasn't top-notch, super spendy, and very unique. Very, not something that most people would be able to afford or would think to wear that would smell good. So for Hannibal Lecter, Dr. Lecter, I chose Danger for Men, by Roger Dove. In the movie Hannibal, the sequel to Silence of the Lambs, he went to this very exclusive perfume shop. Perfumerie. 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 Anyway, it was in Italy. And he wrote her a letter and he wanted it scented with a very special bespoke perfume he had made special for her. <clears throat> Two of the notes in there were ambergris and lavender. So those were the two main notes I wanted to have in this fragrance was lavender and ambergris. So this has ambergris and lavender and woody notes and patchouli and fruits and violet and oak moss and a little bit of vanilla. There's a little bit of animalic notes in there and some tonka and musk. And this perfume has a lot of facets to it, in my opinion. Um, I only had a little sample. This isn't one I own. But it smelled very 
I think what a lot of people would interpret as masculine and that was something that I wanted. I didn't want a unisex perfume because I figured Dr. Lecter would wear a men's perfume. He's old school. He's traditional. I don't think he'd branch out and wear a woman's perfume or a unisex perfume. So, and when I smelled this, it smelled, honestly, it smelled unisex to me, but I think the general public would absolutely um, picture it as a masculine scent. So I just, it's not for me. It's not my favorite, to be really honest with you. And I would never buy it for my husband because it's not something that, you know, floats my dinghy um, in that regard. But I appreciate it. So that's Raja Dove, Danger for Men. Next villain. So my next villain I get a lot of crushes on villains. I really like them a lot of times, sometimes not, but if they're charismatic and there is something about them, their voice, their mannerisms, the way they dress something, um, yeah, that crush -o meter starts rising on up there. And this next one, I miss him, but um, my next villain is Severus Snape from the Harry Potter series, played by Alan Rickman. Gosh, I miss him. thought he was so sexy, as Snape especially. Oh, I also loved him, and he was in some period piece of a famous, famous, famous book. I can't remember. He played like a colonel or something. Anyway, and he ended up with Kate Winslet. I can't remember. Anyway, um, I don't know. I, that's irrelevant. A Severus Snape, though, so hot. I found him so hot. And I wanted something with some mystery and some sweetness to it because at the very end you find out he's actually a really good guy. So I didn't want it too um, intensely dark. I wanted there to be a little lightness to it. For Professor Severus Snape, I chose Killian's Dark Lord. I wanted leather in there and I wanted lots of spice um, because he's hot and spicy. But at the same time, I wanted some sweetness and some softness. So maybe some florals or something like that. So when I looked up the notes um, or the perfumes with, I wanted leather and I wanted a bunch of peppers in there, but I also wanted some florals. I figured that would kind of soften it up. And that's when I came up with Dark Lord. It's leather and vetiver and boozy notes. And then there's some floral, some divana, some citrus, a lot of pepper, some woods, some green notes. Because, you know, uh, uh, Hogwarts is right in the middle of this very green, lush looking area. So, and with a name like Dark Lord, are you kidding me? Oh my God, it was perfect. It was perfection. I mean, on my first list with heroines, I only found one that was that perfect, and that was Arya Stark's, but not today. But Dark Lord, shit, had to be, had to be Severus Snape's perfume. And performance on it is really good. So, all right, next up. My next villain is our creepy villain, but I just love him because he's so creepy. And that was, that's Jack Torrance, played by Jack Nicholson from the movie The Shining. So for Jack Torrance, I wanted some boozy notes in there, because we know he wasn't a very successful, sober ex-alcoholic. And I wanted some woods in there to represent the hotel. And I wanted some grass or green notes or something like that in there to represent the maze. And I got it all. A perfume I'm not crazy about. I, I have smelled it. Didn't like it. Rejected it. But it's perfect for Jack Torrance because I wouldn't want to be around him anyway. 
he's too creepy and he's crazy and he's possessed and whatever. But, um, oh yeah, and he's also murderous. So I chose Andrea Max Coven. It's soil notes and green grassy notes and oak moss and wood and boozy notes and spicy notes. Oh, it, it was perfect. This is another one I just don't care for. I would never wear it, but I appreciate the art of it. And it was like it was made for Jack Torrance from The Shining. Now, as I recall, I don't remember it lasting very long, but I could be wrong. But I don't remember the performance being great on that. But I had to try out a perfume called Coven because, yeah, I'm into creepy shit. So made sense. So anyway, yep, that's Jack Torrance's perfume, Coven, by Andrea Mack. Next up, the next one was one I actually went as Halloween for Halloween two years in a row. Because um, <clears throat> I love the costume so much. And my husband made it. He's really good at doing liquid latex masks and things like that. So he made me up um, as Pinhead from Hellraiser. It was awesome. So I had the coat, the black coat. It had a high collar, so I just let my hair go down the back with my skull cap. And then my husband built these latex pieces. He took plastic toothpicks and melted them on both ends because he knew people would be coming up to my head hitting the, the nails in my head. And so he flattened it on the side that would be up against my head and then he flattened it on the top so it looked like the head of a nail and then he spray painted them silver and they looked just like nails, just like nails. And if you don't know who Pinhead is, He's had this grid cut all over, he's bald, has this grid cut all over his head, um, like a graph, and then everywhere there's a junction, a nail has been driven into his head. So um, anyway, and I, he made pieces like uh, this, the facial piece had the nose on it, so the nose and the skull cap and, and the head piece were all attached, but then I had two cheek pieces and a chin piece. And so when I talked, all these nails moved with my face. It was a coolest, coolest effect. The first year that we went, um, he was my victim as well. He had a, a, a slit throat and he had, he had made a, 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 up the arm of his coat. He had a bulb of fake blood. And so when we first walked in, there was, <laughs> there was this gal <laughs> who had her back to us and she was with her boyfriend and they were close to the door because it was packed. And uh, her boyfriend went, oh, you know, and she turned around, screamed, fell off the chair. And right about that time, my husband lifted his head back and started pumping the blood out of this fake gash. <laughs> Let me tell you, we drank free all night. The bartender was like, all over us. She thought we were so cool. And yes, we won the Halloween costume contest and we won the next year too, but not at the same place. So anyway, I love Pinhead. Love Pinhead. There's something very sexy about him, I have to say. And yes, I tape my boobs down. And here's the kicker at this bar. Um, I had to pee and there was, it was like two stalls in the stupid women's room. It's ridiculous. And so there was this line of about four people out the bathroom and I stood in line and they were like, you can't go in here. You go in the men's room. And I'm like, I'm a woman. Listen to the voice. No Adam's apple. I'm a woman. They're like, no, you're not coming in here. You're no woman. You're a damn dude. Da, 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 da. So I had to go inside the door and basically open up my coat and let them see that I had ace bandages holding everything in. Of course, by the end of the night, I had like six boobs because the ace bandage had popped out here. So something popped out there, then a little popped out here. And so I had another boob here, then one down here, had another boob here because I had to use this ace bandage and I had it wrapped like six times around me. Everywhere it came apart, I had a little boob. So anyway, but you couldn't tell through the coat. So anyway, it was a great costume. Long story longer. I chose Pinhead, who was played by Doug Bradley in the Hellraiser movies. 
So with this one, I wanted something sweet to represent with fruits, sweet fruits to represent the smell of, of you know, death. Um, I would never, you know, put decomp or want decomp in a, a perfume, but that, that rotten fruit smell, you can get some really good perfumes with that kind of almost sweet, almost sickening kind of a smell. Um, so I wanted that. And his coat is leather and he's, he's always covered in black leather. He's coming from hell or the Hellraiser's version of hell. And um, so I wanted a lot of incense in there. A lot of, lot of uh, you know, uh, real bitey kind of incense. And um, some pepper and some musk because, of course, the pepper to add to more of the heat in it. And the musk just to represent the greasiness of all these demons. So the perfume that I came up with, and this is probably my least favorite choice because I really enjoy this perfume, and that's by Olfactive Studio, and that's Chamber Noir. It's got leather, plum, incense, sandalwood, patchouli, violet, some more green notes and floral notes and pepper and musk. And I really wanted something a little, with a little more fire in it and a little less sweet. But I like the dark room, Chamber Noir, dark room, dark chamber, I think, whatever. Um, and I like the title with it. Of course, I add, you know, I, I not only pick it for the notes, but I also try to get a good name for it that fits the character. So in Chamber Noir, probably lasts better on me than most of the olfactive studios do. Um, <clears throat> I've had, I have, I think it's Lumiere Blanche and it lasts like shit, but I love the smell of it. I just don't wear it because it doesn't last more than a half an hour. But Chamber Noir... Chamber, Chom, Chom. Uh, anyway, it's a really pretty perfume. Um, I didn't buy a full bottle of it because I was worried that, you know, I wasn't going to wear it. So that's for Pinhead's Hellraiser is Chamber Noir um, by Olfactive Studio. Next demon or villain or whatever. The next one is Alex DeLarge, played by Malcolm McDowell from Clockwork Orange. This is probably the sickest puppy on this list, but Malcolm McDowell played him so well. He was such a sick ticket. And um, I wanted milk in there. Most definitely I wanted milk, because you know that was his thing, dumping a bunch of drugs in a glass of milk and drinking it. I wanted sweets in there because he's not good at, at holding on to his and, and holding back his impulses. So, you know, lots of sweets and pretty much whatever he'd want to eat. But I wanted some spice and pepper in there to represent the, the craziness of him. And um, musk because he was horrible. He did some awful things, and I'm sure he would smell pretty musky. So anyway, all that being said, I picked Yves Saint Laurent's Black Opium Nuit Blanche. Now, I had, I, I think I still have a little bottle of Black Opium, the regular, and I've smelled the really sparkly, shiny, glittery one. I don't remember what it's called. Um... But I just recently smelled this one. I don't know when this one came out. And this one I actually really like. I think I like it better than the other two. It's sweet and there's vanilla, coffee, caramel, milk. There's some florals, some woods, <clears throat> lots of spices in there and musk. And I don't get a whole lot of any one spice. It's just kind of, and it's not a real hot spice. I should have picked a perfume with some incense or something in there to make it a little more bitey. Yeah, with this one, I wanted the milk. I wanted the caramel. I wanted the spices and I did want the sweets because he comes across so sweet right before he rapes and kills you. 
cell in the most horrible way possible. So that's Alex DeLarge, played by Malcolm McDowell from A Clockwork Orange, wearing Yves Saint Laurent's Black Opium Nuit Blanche. All right, next villain. The next villain, I love this movie, and that's Winifred Sanderson, played by Bette Midler from the movie Hocus Pocus. <laughs> but Bette Midler, the divine Miss M, she can do no wrong in my opinion at all, ever. She is fabulous. I remember her from, he's a boogie woogie boogie boy from Company B. I just love her. Love her. So I wanted something with some sweetness to it because she would want to draw children into her. But with some darkness and some pepper and some musk and some spices because um, she, it, I would want it sweet but with an underlying hint of danger, of heat, of spice. I picked Atelier Dior's Luna this is vanilla and peru balsam and cardamom and ambergris and cinnamon and woody notes and styrax and musk and pepper and some green notes and I just like last week got a sample of it quinky dinkly I love it. It's really good, but there is a fur note in there because I wanted, you know, when I, um, it doesn't say that there's any animalic notes in there other than ambergris and um, musk, but <clears throat> it gives this hint of fur. It gives this air of a slightly animalic musky fur smell because the cat, I can't think of, Jinx, Jinx the cat. I wanted something to represent him in there. And um, so this was perfect. And, you know, Luna or Loon, Luna, Feline, Felina. Anyway, isn't that Mooncat? I'm guessing. <laughs> it seems like it's Mooncat. I don't really know what that means. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. But anyway, Kitty Moon, Meow Meow. I don't know. Anyway, so love it performs terrific and i think luna feline by atelier doors would be perfect for winifred sanderson all right last up my last villain is probably one of the sexiest also along with hannibal lecter on here and that's kylo ren from star wars played by adam driver i wanted to perfume him once he'd fallen in love with Ray. So I wanted some softness, some sweetness, a little bit of floral in there, but I still wanted the leather from his outfit and the incense, the heat from that, and some pepper and some musk, because he always looks just a hint greasy. So um, I haven't smelled this in months, but a friend of mine was wearing this and this was one of the manliest perfumes I've smelled in a long time. And I complimented him on it. And he told me this is what he was wearing. And I think it's been discontinued. And the name was perfect too. It's by D Squared. And this is Potion Royal Black. It's rose and incense and leather and woody notes and cashmere and wood and tobacco and pepper and musk. And a little bit of citrus in there. It's a very manly smelling perfume, but it has a hint of softness to it. Now, it wasn't one that I would wear, but I would totally get my hands on it and give it to my husband. I would love to smell that on him. I don't know if I found it as sexy as I did mysterious and dark, and I love the name of it for him as well. So, oh, he's so cute. Anyway, it's uh, D squared Potion Royal Black for Kylo Ren from Star Wars, played by Adam Driver. All right, well, this was fun to do, and um, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I'll be back with another list, house review, perfume review, something very soon. 
All right, everybody, stay well and use your own nose. Peace.